I did grow up in Haverhill, and in Haverhill, I hope they still teach a little bit of Whittier in the grade schools. I only went through eighth grade, but it was at the Whittier School, grades five through eight, that brand new school. Come on in if you feel like it. <laughs> um, and we read Barefoot Boy, and we read parts of Snowbound. And of course, in Haverhill, you really had to be aware of Whittier. And so I thought, since I had never read in Haverhill before, I should pay the proper respect to Whittier and begin by reading a poem of his. And I think I found one that you may not have heard. And it, it really epitomizes a lot of the elements of, of Whittier's character in a very dramatic way. But I don't think it's a very well-known poem. And I'll read you from, from his collected works. There's a paragraph that appears to have been written by him that introduces this poem. It's a poem in a, in a ballad form called Kathleen. <clears throat> and he says, this ballad was originally published in my prose work, Leaves from Margaret Smith's Journal, as the song of a wandering schoolmaster. In the 17th century, slavery in the New World was by no means confined to the natives of Africa. Political offenders and criminals were transported by the British government to the plantations of Barbados and Virginia, where they were sold like cattle in the market. Kidnapping of free and innocent white persons was practiced to a considerable extent in the seaports of the United Kingdom. And this particular poem, which is called Kathleen, tells the story of a young Irish woman who was sold to a New England Protestant. And so there's the anti-slavery element. And there's also, as you'll see, a very interesting take on Catholics and the Protestants in the Old and the New World. So this is called Kathleen. O oh, Nora, lay your basket down and rest your weary hand, and come and hear me sing a song of our old Ireland. There was a lord of Galloway, a mighty lord was he, and he did wed a second wife, a maid of low degree. But he was old, and she was young, and so, in evil spite, she baked the black bread for his kid, and fed her own with white. She whipped the maids and starved the kern, and drove away the poor. Ah, woe is me, the old lord said, I rue my bargain sore. This lord, he had a daughter fair, beloved of old and young, and nightly round the shielding fires of her the gleeman sung. As sweet and good as young Kathleen, as Eve before her fall, so sang the harper at the fair, so harped he in the hall. Oh, come to me, my daughter dear, come, sit upon my knee, for looking in your face, Kathleen, your mother's own, I see. He smoothed and smoothed her hair away. He kissed her forehead fair. It is my darling Mary's brow. It is my darling's hair. Oh, then spake up the angry dame. Get up, get up, quoth she. I'll sail you over Ireland. I'll sail you over the sea. She clipped her glossy hair away, that none but her rank might know. She took away her gown of silk and gave her one of tow and sent her down to Limerick town, and to a seaman sold this daughter of an Irish lord for ten good pounds of gold. The lord, he smote upon his breast and tore his beard so gray, but he was old and she was young, and so she had her way. Sure, that same night the banshee howled to fright the evil dame and fairy folks who loved Kathleen with funeral torches came. She watched them glancing through the trees and glimmering down the hill. They crept before the dead vault door, a 
and there they all stood still. Get up, old man, the wake light shine. Ye birthry witch, quoth he. So I'm rid of your tongue, I little care if they shine for you or me. Oh, whoso brings my daughter back, my gold and land shall have. Oh, then spake up his handsome page. Nor gold nor land I crave, but give to me your daughter dear. Give sweet Kathleen to me, be she on sea or be she on land, I'll bring her back to thee. My daughter is a lady born, and you of low degree, but she shall be your bride the day you bring her back to me. He sailed east, he sailed west, and far and long sailed he, until he came to Boston town, across the great salt sea. Oh, have ye seen the young Kathleen, the flower of Ireland? You'll know her by her eyes so blue, and by her snow-white hand. Out spake an ancient man. I know the maiden whom ye mean. I bought her of a limerick man, and she is called Kathleen. No skill has she in household work. Her hands are soft and white. Yet well by loving looks and ways she doth her cost requite. So up they walked through Boston town and met a maiden fair, a little basket on her arm so snowy white and bare. Come hither, child, and say, Hast thou this young man ever seen? They wept within each other's arms, the page and young Kathleen. Oh, give to me this darling child and take my purse of gold. Nay, not by me, her master said, shall sweet Kathleen be sold. We loved her in the place of one the Lord hath early taken. But since her heart's in Ireland, we give her back again. Oh, for that saying, the saints in heaven for his poor soul shall pray, and Mary, mother, wash with tears his heresies away. Sure, now they dwell in Ireland. As you go up Claremore, you'll see their castle looking down the pleasant Galway shore. And the old Lord's wife is dead and gone, and a happy man is he. For he sits beside his own Kathleen with her darling on his knee. <laughs> thank you. I'd like to thank Mr. Whittier for producing this for us. What year was that written, do you know? Uh, I'm guessing uh, the 1850s or 60s, but I'm not sure. But I, uh, you notice the little line about the, the the Protestant man's heresies are washed away by the prayers. It's, it's terrific. But this is characteristic of Whittier that he chooses to write about white slavery. And uh, I had never heard of Irish women being sold into slavery and brought here. So.